Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about Krigler Najjar syndrome. So let's start. So what is this syndrome exactly? So it is an inherited disorder which affects the metabolism of bilirubin and it is characterized by an increase in unconjugated bilirubin. This is different from Dubin Johnson syndrome and Rotor syndrome where conjugated bilirubin is increased. I've already made videos on both of those topics. So make sure to go and check those out. So this condition is caused by abnormalities in gene coding for uridine diphosphoglucuronate glucuronosyl transferase. Yeah, I know it's a big name, but the short form you can remember here is UGT1A1. Now what is the pathophysiology behind this condition? Let's see. So take this to be a hepatocyte. You must be knowing that normally from the blood, the unconjugated bilirubin enters the hepatocyte and then this unconjugated bilirubin is converted into conjugated bilirubin with the help of the enzyme that we were just talking about, the UGT1A1. Now you tell me, if this enzyme is not working, what is going to happen? The unconjugated bilirubin is not going to be formed and the levels of unconjugated bilirubin are going to increase, right? Okay, now there are two types of krigler najjar syndrome which you have to remember. We have type 1 and type 2. It's pretty easy to remember them. So the type 1 is more severe as compared to type 2 which is less severe. Why is this? Because in type 1, there are absent levels of UGT1A1. But in type 2, even though there are very very less levels of this enzyme, less than 10%, but still there are at least some enzymes that are working. Now if there is no UGT1A1, there will be very very high levels of unconjugated bilirubin, right? But in type 2, the levels will be high, but not as high as seen in type 1. Now Kernicterus, which is brain damage seen due to high levels of bilirubin is usually present in type 1. Why? Because unconjugated bilirubin levels are very very high. But in type 2, the Kernicterus is rarely seen. Finally, response to phenobarbitone is not seen in type 1, but in type 2, some response is seen. Now what do I mean by this? So phenobarbitone is an enzyme inducer. Since in type 1, there are no enzymes to induce, no matter how much phenobarbitone you give, there is no response going to be seen. But in type 2, since there are at least some enzymes that are working, if you give phenobarbitone, there will be good response seen. Okay, now what are the clinical features seen here? So these clinical features are especially pronounced in the type 1, where you can start to see the clinical features from day 0 itself. So the palms and soles of the baby will start to turn yellow, and if this happens, it will be called as pathological jaundice. Seizures and opisthotonus may also be seen and the milestones may be delayed. How are you going to treat this condition? So the treatment will depend on the type of krigler najjar syndrome that we have. So in type 1, since there are no enzymes, we will have to do liver transplantation. But in type 2, we can give phenobarbital therapy since there are at least some enzymes that are working. So that was a quick video on krigler najjar syndrome. Make sure to check the other videos out because it is really going to help you differentiate between these disorders. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, so please leave them in the comments or you can message me on Instagram. Thank you.